Hello, uh, everyone, and welcome to the Global Immuno Talk. Uh, my name is Matteo Yanacone, and it is uh, my great pleasure today to introduce uh, Maria Mittelbrum as our uh, Global Immuno Speaker. So Maria is uh, originally from Madrid, uh, Spain, uh, where she's currently the head of the Immunometabolism and Inflammation Lab at the Molecular Biology Center Severo Ochoa, a position she has held since 2017. Now, Maria's uh, research um, aims to identify new strategies to target immune cells for boosting systemic resilience to inflammaging uh, cellular senescence and age-related uh, multimorbidity. Uh, among uh, Maria's uh, most important discoveries um, are the demonstration that uh, mimicking age-associated mitochondrial dysfunction in T cells not only recapitulates immune senescence, but it also causes a general uh, body-wide deterioration of health with multiple aging-related features, including metabolic, cardiovascular, and cognitive alterations, altogether resulting in premature death. And, and her results uh, basically place T-cell metabolism at the crossroad between inflammation, uh, senescence, and aging. And also they highlight immunometabolism as a therapeutic target to delay aging. Uh, Maria went on to dissect, uh, to dissect the molecular mechanism by which aged T-cells contribute to inflammation and age-related disease. And this, I'm sure we'll hear more today, but this includes the induction of cellular senescence by Th1 cytokines, the loss of cell tolerance mechanism, uh, altered gut microbiota, and, and so forth, uh, further identifying um, therapeutic targets to potentially delay age-related multimorbidity. Uh, Maria has obtained funding from uh, major European and Spanish uh, organizations, including uh, the starting grant and a consolidated grant from the ERC. And uh, she has received uh, multiple uh, prizes for her work, including the Doctoral Thesis Extraordinary Prize, the L'Oreal UNESCO for Women in Science, and the Premio Banco Sabadell for Biomedical Research. Maria, uh, thanks so much for having accepted our invitation, uh, uh, and I very much look forward to your talk entitled uh, T-Cells as Drivers of Senescence and Aging. Now, before we start, uh, it is a tradition of the Global Immuno Talk uh, to ask our speakers uh, a personal question uh, to get to know them a little better and perhaps to inspire the next generation of scientists. So the question we have chosen for you is, um, what is the advice uh, you would give to your 25, 35 year old self? Well, hello, Matteo. Thank you very much for this opportunity to present our work. Uh, well, to my 20 year old self, I would, sell, I would tell me, to learn more English, just in case in the future I would be, <laughs> I would have the opportunity to present a global immuno talk that requires you to be posted and record on in YouTube forever, <laughs> speaking in English. No, but seriously, beside this, I would say that um, to myself, try not to suffer so much. Every time I get a rejection of a grant, an article, or a position, just keep going. Those failures were just the beginning of something better. Here, here. It is indeed an integral part of our, of our job. Thanks so much, Maria. So without any further ado, uh, you can share your screen, and the floor is yours. Okay. So. Today, my intention is to convince you on the importance of the immune system on the control of aging and AIDS-associated diseases. During aging, the function of the immune system deteriorates, making us more vulnerable to cancer, autoimmunity, and infections. But recent results from our lab and other labs reveal that our immune system controls the rate, the velocity at which we age. And this is what I am going to talk today, how the immune system controls our aging. Well, inflammation is a protective response that it engages upon injury, infection, or stress to restore our tissues. To be protective, inflammation needs to be local and controlling time. In contrast, systemic and chronic inflammation is associated with several human pathologies, including neurodegenerative disorder, autoimmune, cardiovascular, metabolic, bone and muscular diseases, and would 
And what do they have in common, all these pathologies? They have three features in common. First, they involve inflammation and the participation of cells of the immune system. Second, in, they disrupt tissue homeostasis. And third, their incidence increase with AIDS. So all of them are considered AIDS-associated diseases. In fact, aging is associated with chronic inflammation. As we age, there is an increase in the circulating levels of pro-inflammatory uh, cytokines, mostly IL-6 and TNF. And uh, this low rate, but chronic inflammation that appear in the elderly has been called inflammation. Recent uh, results using artificial intelligence suggest that just by measuring these inflammatory mediators, we can predict our biological age. So there are certain cytokines and inflammatory roots that has been involved in the uh, in, in aging and AIDS-associated diseases. On the other hand, anti-inflammatory mediators has been associated with families with a history of longevity. And I always like to show this picture of my friend Amanda's family, whose great-grandmother uh, lived to be 107 years old. Well, this inflammation uh, mediators has been associated with aging, but what is the contribution of the different immune cells to aging has not been uh, uh, addressed. Uh, and this is the main question of our lab. We are especially interested in T cells and white T cells because they are the only immune cells that are generated in the thymus. And thymus atrophy is considered the first manifestation of aging. So, uh, the thymus is the largest and most, most active during neonatal and pre-adolescent period. But by the early teens, thymus begins to atrophy. By the 40s, thymic stroma is mostly replaced by adipose tissue. And as a consequence of this uh, thymic, thymic uh, atrophy, is that there is a decline in the number of new T cells that reach the periphery. That implies that at my age, most of the T cells has been generated in early stages of my life. In part, just due to this uh, thymus involution, uh, is that the, there are dramatic changes in T cell compartment during aging. When we are young, we have mostly naive T cells, but during aging, uh, there is a decline in the naive T cell pool and we start to accumulate effector memory uh, T cells that some of them have senescence or exhausted uh, properties. And the changes that occur uh, in T cell compartment with aging are responsible of making us more vulnerable to infection, cancer, or autoimmunity, but also to have a, a reduction in our vaccination response. But in the lab, we think that these changes also are responsible of this chronic inflammation that appears in the elderly and that predispose to the risk of many AIDS-associated disorders. So, as you know, these cells have a special set of skills and like other cells of the body, they migrate from one tissue to another, searching for pathogens and patrolling the, the body. Uh, once they recognize an antigen, they clonally expand and they, if they are a CD8, they transform into killing machines. They become cytotoxic and they are able to eliminate infected or damaged cells. In case of CD4 T cells, once they recognize an antigen in the surface of an antigen presenting cells, they activate and differentiate towards the different effector subsets. And during this differentiation, they had quite competence to fight different pathogens through the release of different cytokines. Well, now in the last years, we learned that during this 
differentiation program, T cells adapt their metabolism. And just by controlling the metabolism of T cells, we can uh, manipulate the outcome of the immune response. A successful immune response is characterized by a biphasic uh, mode. Initially, uh, there is a fast and robust immune activation, which leads to the peak of inflammation. And then this is followed by a resolution phase that gradually set off inflammation. And is this resolution phase is essential to restore homeostasis when the danger of the damax or the pathogen has been eliminated. If there is a failure in this resolution uh, phase, this will lead to chronic inflammation. Well, the metabolism of T cells adapt to this biphasic inflammatory response. Initially, naive T cells are metabolically quiescent and they mostly rely on mitochondrial metabolism. Once they are activated and they start to proliferate, they also engage glycolysis to fulfill a highly proliferative and all these nutritional demands. Once the uh, immune challenge has been eliminated in the resolution phase, phase T cells readapt again to their metabolism and depend more in mitochondrial metabolism. Well, this is what happened in a successful in inflammatory response when we are young. The, hypo the hypothesis of our lab is that when we are young, we, uh, there is a mitochondrial dysfunction in T cells as occur in many other cells in the body. And as consequence of this mitochondrial dysfunction, T cells acquire a pro-inflammatory phenotype that could contribute to chronic inflammation. So to test this hypothesis, what we did first is to isolate T cells uh, from young and old mice and assess if there is AIDS-associated AIDS mitochondrial dysfunction. We can measure um, mitochondrial fitness by flow cytometry combining to prove that allow us to distinguish cells that have a highly um, high mitochondrial mass with a high membrane potential from those others that have low mitochondrial mass and low uh, mitochondrial uh, membrane potential. So using this strategy, we analyze T cells from young mice and observe mostly that they have healthy mitochondria. In contrast, T cells from old mice accumulate damaged uh, mitochondria. And this accumulation of uh, damaged mitochondria correlates with the age of the, of the mice. We confirm that all T cells uh, have mitochondrial dysfunction by performing a seahorse analysis when we measure oxygen consumption rate from young T cells in gray and old uh, T cells in blue. We observe this decline in oxygen consumption rate that suggests that there is a mitochondrial dysfunction in all T cells. And we also detect a highly production of lactate that suggests that there is a compensation on uh, the cells to survive, uh, compensate this mitochondrial decline by uh, engaging glycolysis. So, we confirm that has occurred with many other cells in the body, there is an AIDS-associated mitochondrial decline in T cells during, during aging. Well, to, to, to assess the consequences of this mitochondrial decline, we, we mimic this AIDS-associated mitochondrial dysfunction. And to do this, we take advantage of mitochondrial transcription factor A, TFAM, Mitochondrial transcription factor A uh, is a transcription factor that is encoded in the nucleus, but control the transcription, transcription, replication, and stability of mitochondrial DNA. So if you deplete TFAM from a cell or a tissue, 
you induce a dramatic mitochondrial dysfunction due to the loss of mitochondrial DNA. Well, uh, we take advantage of TFAM flux flux mice that were generated in Larson, Larson lab, and we flux with these mice with CD4 cray. By this strategy, we deplete specifically TFAM in all T cells in CD4 and CD8, accordingly to double positive uh, states during thymus development. Well, we observe by, by this strategy, we reproduce this mitochondrial dysfunction that we observe in, in, in old uh, T cells. Our young mutant uh, T cells have reduced oxygen consumption in a similar way than, than, than all controls. So we have been able to mimic this AIDS-associated mitochondrial dysfunction. And what we observe, we observe that these mice re resemble adaptive immune uh, system aging. In terms of, we observe that our young mutant mice have a drop in the naive uh, pool and an increase in the effector memory T cell pool in a similar way that occurs in normal old, uh, in natural old mice. We also observe that our young mutant T cells have increased expression of immunosenescence markers such as KLRG1 and reduced expression of co-stimulatory molecules such as CD27 or CD28. That is something characteristic of all T cells. What about their function? We try to differentiate TIFAN depleted T cells towards TH1, TH2, TH17, and Treg, And what we observe is that they are committed to differentiate towards TH1. Uh, in all the conditions, they always differentiate towards TH1, producing high amounts of interferon gamma and TNF, and expressing TBET. And importantly, we observe this TH1 polarization also in uh, normal, uh, natural old T cells. As a consequence of this TH1 polarization, uh, we observe that there is an increase in the levels of uh, circulating inflammatory I6 and TNF. Uh, so our mice uh, have premature inflammation. When they are young, they have an inflammatory status similar to all controls. And what happened with the, the function of the immune system in, in this mass? Well, our young mutant mice are immunocompromised as all control. So we infect uh, these mice with extromelia virus. And we observe that in young controls, 100% of the mice are able to survive to this extromelia infection. However, our young mutant mice and all controls, uh, they died in the first 10 days of the infections. They also saw a reduction in the vaccination response and inefficient cancer response. So with this, we conclude that just by inducing mitochondrial dysfunction to mimic in this AIDS-associated mitochondrial dysfunction in T cells, we recapitulate the main hallmarks of T cell aging, including this, uh, this balance between the knife and the memory pool, this differentiation toward TH1 phenotype with senescence characteristics, and they, uh, they are functionally immunocompromised, these mice. What happened? The next question what, what happens if all your T cells age prematurely? Well, we observe that these mice look in a very bad shape. They present this uh, kyphosis that uh, is, uh, is an abnormal curvature of the upper back. They start losing weight. And importantly, they have a reduction in lifespan about 50%. Why they are dying? We observe that these mice have dramatic uh, cardiovascular alterations including diastolic dysfunction and lung congestion that is also 
something that reveal a heart failure. We observe a aortic dilation in these young mutant mice. And in some cases, we are also uh, we also observe events of dissections of the tunica media in the aorta of these mice. So probably these mice are dying due to these uh, cardiovascular alterations. We also observe that these mice present sarcopenia assessed by a reduction in the uh, diameter of the skeletal muscle uh, fibers. Uh, they also have uh, signs of uh, muscle proteolysis and reduce in the strength by grip test uh, assays. We observe that these mice show cognitive decline. There are an increase uh, Diesel infiltration to the brain of these mice, and they saw a worse performance in behavioral tests such as the NEST uh, assay in rotor road experiment and in the Y maze. The, the skin of, of the, these mice also saw signs of premature aging. In terms of the, the, we observe a reduction in the hypodermal fat, something that also occurs in old controls. They have a delay in hair growth and in the wound healing experiments. And we observe that performing pulse and chase experiments with BRDU to assess stem cell mobilization, that there are alteration in hair follicular stem cell mobilization. So all these data suggest that the uh, stem cells could, uh, 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 the function of these stem cells could be altered. In fact, we isolate uh, hair follicular stem cells from the mice and we perform colony, colony formation assays. And we observe that the uh, stem cells from our mutant mice has reduced uh, colony formation assays. Interestingly, we perform ataxic experiments uh, in these uh, stem cells, and we observe that there are um, changes in the remodeling of the chromatin uh, on, on our mutant mice. So it's like the inflammation could impact the epigenetic uh, landscape of stem cells in these mice. So taking together, what we propose is that mimicking H-associated mitochondrial decline. Yes, in T cells, we have premature inflammation, and as a consequence, we have cardiovascular disease, anemia, sarcopenia, cognitive decline, physical disability, and premature death. We published this uh, in, in 2020 and uh, an independent lab uh, from Laura Niederhofer uh, recently also published in results in the, in the same direction, proposing that an H immune system could drive aging of solid organs. So the next question was how? How can aging related changes in T cells lead to aging deterioration in the rest of the tissue? which is the molecular mechanism. To, to go into the molecular mechanism, we get inspired in this uh, paper that the authors propose that TH1 cytokines could induce senescence in, in tumor cells. Since our mutant uh, mice have this polarization toward TH1 response and they produce mostly our TSS produced interferon gamma and TNF, we wonder if uh, we can detect senescence in the different tissue. So we assess uh, senescence markers in the liver, pancreas, heart, and also beta-galactosidase activity in the water adipose tissue and in the kidney. So this data suggests that there's senescence in multiple tissues in our young mutant mice. To try to understand the molecular mechanism, what we did is we took the serum of our mice and incubate healthy, healthy cells for seven days. And this was enough to induce P21, a senescence marker, in healthy, in healthy cells. 
this is in vitro to try to reproduce this experiment in vivo. What we did is we performed bone marrow transplantation assay. So we took bone marrow precursor from our mutant mice and uh, transplant into joint recipients. And here is the results. These are uh, two little mates that has been this one transplanted with bone marrow precursor from our uh, mutant mice. And this one has been transplanted with bone marrow precursor from controls mice. Four months after the transplant, uh, uh, this is how they look. The one that has been transplanted with the uh, bone marrow precursor from our mutant look in a bad shape. And they present signs of senescence, sarcopenia, and cardiovascular alterations. So to go deep on the molecular mechanism, we treat these mice for 10 weeks with etanercep. Etanercep is a TNF blocker that is widely used in the clinic for inflammatory diseases, including arthritis, psoriasis, and other inflammatory disorders. Well, this uh, treatment was enough to delay the, the AIDS-associated multimorbidity of our mice. So mice that were treated with etanercept uh, have reduced uh, signs of cardiovascular alteration, sarcopenia. The white mice was, uh, uh, they perform better and there is a reduction in the senescence in, in different tissues in mice treated with DNF blocker. In the same line, there is uh, uh, an independent lab has uh, tried the, the consequence of TNF uh, etanercept uh, treatment in natural old uh, con control mice, and they observe also that uh, they delay sarcopenia, and even they have increased half span in these mice. So we propose that all T cells acquire several senescence features such as mitochondrial dysfunction, and they acquire a pro-inflammatory phenotype characterized mostly by secreting TNF and interferon gamma. And these pro-inflammatory cytokines could induce senescence in, uh, uh, in healthy tissues. Other uh, labs uh, suggest also that uh, T cells during aging start to secrete Gramsim key that also could contribute to this uh, senescence accumulation. But there is also evidence that during aging, T cells acquire natural killer receptors and natural killer properties, and they are able all T cells are able to induce tissue damage in a TCR independent manner. These are work from Arniak Bar lab. So, with all this piece of evidence, we propose different mechanisms by which all T cells can act as agent accelerator. First, because they acquire this pathogenic function, secreting interferon gamma, TNF, ransom key, that could induce senescence in the rest of the tissues. Second, they start to acquire uh, innate properties such as natural killer receptors that could induce tissue damage in a TCR independent manner. We also must uh, be aware that T cells never and the immune cells never work alone. They always work in concert. So all T cells could wake up innate immunity, innate Im immune cells. And this contribute to spread the inflammatory signal. And on the other way around, all T cells also can act as agent accelerator by losing their uh, protective function. First of all, because you need a functional immune system to identify and deplete senescent cells, and also because the, our immune system, and especially T cells, are essential to control gut dysbiosis. And if you have an alteration in T cells, this could contribute to my, uh, microbiota dis, 
uh, dysbiosis, bacterial translocation, and uh, chronic inflammation. So we think all these mechanisms work together. They are not mutually excluded. And uh, we have the idea that it's essential to understand this molecular mechanism if we want to propose then uh, different strategies to in increase our resilience to aging and to, to delay its associated multimorbidity. And in the last five years, uh, we have learned a lot of the changes that occur on T cells during aging thanks to single cell RNA-seq. These experiments from Alon Monsonego lab, they, uh, they show the heterogeneity of the different subset of all T cells that accumulate in the uh, old mice that include activated T-Rex, exhausted T cells, effect or memory T cells, and cytotoxic T cells. And these AIDS associated T cells have different transcriptomic signature that allow us to identify uh, the different uh, clusters of these AIDS associated T cells. Well, thanks to this single cell RNA seq, we have been able to design a panel of uh, 32 uh, antibodies that allow us to perform the similar UMAP plots and the similar clusterization that we get with single cell RNA seq to reproduce this by flow cytometry. And this is a robust and fast um, protocol that allow us to map the accumulation of all these AIDS associated T cells in the different tissues during aging. And this is what we are doing now, try to identify the location, the metabolic vulnerabilities, which are the secretion factor that produce the different uh, um, clusters of H associated T cells in the different uh, tissues during aging. With the idea, if we identify their location and also their metabolic uh, requirements, which are their specific surface receptor that allow us to identify the different clusters. We are also studying which are the tissue common receptor to the different uh, locations, the uh, gut, the brain, the bone marrow, the liver, and which are the different uh, uh, secreting factor. With all this information, we will be able to identify the vulnerabilities of these AIDS associated T cells to target them with the idea to delay inflammation and AIDS associated multimorbidity. And this is what we are planning in the next uh, five years, thanks to the ERC consolidator grant, let TB, that uh, is, um, and this is the main, uh, the main, uh, main idea. In the different interventions that we are currently, I am not able to present, just the idea that we are currently performing in the lab is try to boost resilience to inflammation, senescent and aging by targeting T cells. And we propose six lines of different strategies that includes trying to uh, induce mouse models, mouse models with famous involution resistance. We also are studying if we can deplete senescence pathogenic T cells to improve this resilience to aging. Another idea is to rejuvenate T cells thanks to immunometabolism. Can we boost mitochondrial function to rejuvenate T cells and to delay aging? We are also testing not only TNF, but all the other uh, specific cytokines that we are uh, detecting in the different cluster of H associated T cells. We will also try to increase the resilience of the different tissue to this uh, inflammation and this T cell attack. And finally, uh, an idea would be 
to try to boost uh, T cell control of microbiota during aging. And there are pioneer labs that has been already successful in this on some strategies using the immune system to delay aging and AIDS associated disorders. I just want to mention three works, uh, one coming from a uh, lab in which they uh, design CAR T cells specific against senescent cells. And by doing this, they deplete senescence in the tissue and they can delay certain uh, uh, senescence pathologies such as liver fibrosis. There are other labs that has been pioneer in improving and boosting immunometabolism to delay uh, cognitive decline and aging. In this case, oh, sorry, in this case, they improve uh, myeloid cells metabolism. And also uh, there are groups that has been able to deplete uh, specifically T cells and by doing this, uh, uh, to deplete senescence T cells and by doing this, um, improve metabolic parameters. So I just want to show you in the last two slides, uh, some of the approaches that we are trying now that we have developed this mouse model for studying AIDS associated multimorbidity, just to, uh, as an example, that we can find dra drugs that could delay many diseases uh, of all AIDS at the same time. So with this idea, we first, we, we, we try NAD precursors. Why NAD precursors? Because it has been established from Eric Verdin lab. There has been established a correlation between this chronic inflammation and a drop in mitochondrial function and NAD levels. As you know, NAD is a metabolic cofactor that is essential for uh, multiple um, metabolic reactions. And during aging, you, there is a drop in, in NAD levels. And it has been proposed by many labs that increasing NAD levels using NAD precursors, uh, such as nicotidamine riboside, you can improve mitochondrial disorders, but also many AIDS-associated uh, diseases. So, since we have this mouse model of AIDS associated, of, of AIDS -associated multimorbidity, we test if NID precursors could delay the phenotype of our mice. We treat uh, the mice for uh, two months with nicotidamine riboside, and we observed that this was enough to delay uh, the cardiovascular defects the sarcopenia, physical disability, and also to delay inflammation in our mutant mice. Importantly, we perform transcriptomics of the liver of these mice, and we observed that our mutant mice that were treated with NR precursors, with NR, they look closer to controls than to uh, mutant, suggesting that the NR are able to delay the, the, the phenotype and even the transcriptomic signature in our mutant mice. Just uh, to finish, since uh, we observe that NR was able to prevent aortic dilation in our mutant mice, we go to test if it is also uh, you have also a promising uh, strategy to prevent aortic aneurysm in a, a mouse model of aortic aneurysm and, and, and sudden death. So to do this, well, aortic aneurysm, as you know, are characterized by the dilation of the aorta, the co causing a weakening of the vascular wall. Aneurysm usually cause no symptoms, but increase the risk of dissection, rupture of the, of the aorta. 
And in this case, this results in a massive and often fatal internal bleed. So aortic aneurysm are associated with genetic factors, age and lifestyles. And the prevalence, the prevalence of this aneurysm is uh, are estimated around 8% in men beyond 65 uh, years old. There are no pharmacological options to treat uh, aneurysm and the only effective solution is major surgery. So to test if this treatment with NR was uh, uh, enough to delay Aneurysm, we use APOE mice that were challenged with Western diet and angiotensin 2. Uh, and we treat these mice with NR even before the angiotensin or after the angiotensin. In the two scenarios, as a preventing uh, treatment or a curative treatment, we observe that NR reduce the death of these mice. So we observe that there is a reduction in the dimension of the aorta, and also we observe uh, improvement on the histological analysis, and we uh, prevent this sudden death due to aortic dissections. And with this, I want to finish. So just to su uh, summarize uh, the talk, uh, we talk our, our past work in which we desynchronize the age of T cells from the rest of the body. And we observe that uh, this mice age faster. So in the second part, I talk about the molecular mechanics by which these old T cells induce or act as AN accelerators. This is the present of our lab. And the future will be if we can uh, target AIDS-associated T cells to boost resilience to aging and to AIDS-associated diseases. And this is the, the most important slide, is the people in the lab. This is what I am most proud. So it's the best thing I did in the last seven years was to recruit uh, this amazing group of people. I am um, uh, so, Happy to work with them, their brilliant ideas, her, their effort and their enthusiasm is which uh, I think make me enjoy uh, science. And I want also to thank the funding of the lab, a special thanks to the European Research Councils. I, when I apply to the starting grant, I was just a senior postdoc that wants to become uh, principal investigators. And I got the starting grant in the reserve list. And, and I think uh, this changed my scientific career. So I am immensely happy and grateful for this uh, uh, ERC grants. Also, I want to thank my institution, uh, the Consejo Superior de Investigaciones Científicas y el Centro de Biología Molecular, and thanks to all the networks, uh, all the network of collaborators that always are willing to help and advise us. So thank you very much. Thank you to all of you, and thank you, Mateo, for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Maria, for a fantastic talk and for uh, uh, taking us uh, from uh, basic science all the way to potential uh, therapeutic applications. So um, I'm sure there are a lot of questions for Maria. And as usual, we will ask them via Twitter. So you should search for account Global Immunotalks. Uh, you should find the tweet that says, ask questions for Dr. Maria Mittelbrum here. And you should reply to that tweet with your question and make sure you mention uh, um, the hashtag Global Immuno. And Maria will reply from her um, um, lab uh, Twitter uh, account. And uh, thanks, everyone, uh, for listening. Thanks again, Maria. Don't forget to uh, connect for uh, next week's uh, Global Immuno Talk, which is going to be held by Caroline King. Thank you, Maria, again. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.